We all thought that Wolverine escaped from his adamantium prison, but there's a lot more to it than that. What's up, everybody? I'm Stan, and welcome to Detail Comics, where we go over comics in detail. This is an eye review, a show where I go over a comic book, its story, its art, give you my impressions, and let you know whether it's something you should go back to the comic book shop for or not. Make sure you subscribe to get more of these every single week. The book that I want to talk about right now is Hunt for Wolverine number one. So this is going to be kicking off a massive bunch of multi-small part series that are going to be following along with the adventures of Wolverine, or at least the groups of people that are trying to hunt this guy down. So there's been a little bit of interest in this, and I mean, it was a part of Marvel Legacy number one, and there's a few allusions to that inside the book, but let's dive in and see exactly how deep this rabbit hole goes. Ever since the pages of Marvel Legacy number one, we've actually been waiting for this moment. And the hunt for Wolverine is going to start by giving us the history of what happened after Wolverine was encased in adamantium. So Charles Sewell jumps off in Alberta, Canada, as we see the Reavers, a collection of them, heading towards this unknown location where they're going to be tracking down somebody. And that somebody is Logan inside his adamantium prison. So while the Reavers feel like the mutants aren't necessarily thinking the same way, they aren't human after all, they approach the statue of Wolverine encased in adamantium. Of course, some think it's beautiful, but the others remember the trouble that the bastard gave them all those years ago. So what happens is that we see them trying to abscond, trying to take away this statue of Wolverine. Somebody's paying them to do this. They've screwed up their last few gigs, which means that they've taken damage that they can't afford to fix. So do they want to make the repairs? Do they want to be in the top condition? They need to figure out exactly how to get this Wolverine statue out of here and get it to the person that's paying them to do that. They do, of course, hear something. There's other things in the distance. There's a sound that's like a, a bamf, which is a familiar sound to a lot of these Reavers. So they drop the statue of Wolverine, and then all of a sudden you see the X-Men arrive. We've got Storm, we've got Nightcrawler, Colossus, Kitty Pride. They're here, and it seems like this is something more than what you would expect. This is some kind of setup, because the X-Men are out there defending their friend's tomb, making sure that the respects are paid to him. But this just serves as a way for us to introduce exactly what's going on later on in the issue because we're going to jump back to just after the death of Wolverine, just after he was encased in this molten adamantium, and we introduce Reed Richards, somebody who says that he had come, Wolverine had come to him investigating the loss of his healing factor, trying to find out exactly what was going to be going on, seeing if Reed could help rejuvenate it. Unfortunately, he didn't have the kind of success that he was hoping for, and what you'll notice is that this is relatively long time ago. You've still got Cyclops before he killed Charles Xavier. This this is a completely different era of X-Men. And Storm stands there in front of the statue, this encased Logan put on a pedestal, and she questions how right this is. You know, Logan died, he was buried alive in this horrible end as this molten metal encased his body. We, we put him on a literal pedestal, but Colossus, of course, has a different idea. And we see this Reaver's battle continue, Scylla taking her molecular rearranger, trying to get through this adamantium, one of the toughest metals in the world. As the battle rages on, you just see lightning and electricity blasting through the skies from Storm, from the Reavers. Kitty Pride is phasing into and out of these individuals, Nightcrawler bamfing all over the place. It's a really action-packed scene. Colossus making his way through the fires as he's trying to get to Pierce, well, as he's trying to get to Scylla. The molecular rearranger finally doing its job and then finally THOOM! And what we find is that the statue of Wolverine was empty all along. They never really had a chance to take Wolverine's body because it was never inside the adamantium. It was for some portion of time, but not when they found it. So Kitty Pride shoves her arms into the chests of Pierce and Silas so that that way they're disabled, and they ask the question everybody else is asking at this point in time, where the hell is Wolverine? And what we see is a younger Kitty Pride, only slightly, and she is so questioning herself about the possibility of phasing this man out. She pulls his arm from the statue, separating his skin, his flesh, the adamantium in his body from the adamantium that's encasing him, pulling his burned corpse out of this, wrapped up in this X-Men flag, and brought to a grave outside in the wilderness. Again, an unmarked space where only a select few know his location. And this seems right. It seems better. Paying their respects, Jubilee's there. It looks like Colossus is there, Kitty Pride, Rogue, Scott Summers, Beast, Storm, a few others that are paying their respects to Logan. But then we bounce back. We're back in the modern day where the Reavers have just been taken out. Firestar is there. And then finally the situation is exposed where Wolverine is no longer in adamantium. And while Colossus is there and he seems to think that it's a, you know, relatively safe way to leave that 
statue. Like themselves, they are mutants. The statue has evolved itself. We actually see Kitty combating the kind of decisions that she's been making recently, drinking her Canadian Molson-looking beer and pouring one out for Logan. And what she sees is that that flag that wrapped Logan up That's no longer around a body. It appears to be stuck in a tree off in the distance. She phases into the ground, reaches in, and then there's a cavity. Immediately after that, we see Logan piercing the chest of some man, pinning him up against a wall, leaving him for dead, and he's relatively clean-shaven. It seems like he's younger. There's a shallow grave that's dug up where we see Nightcrawler, Colossus, Kitty Pride, Storm, and Beast over the top of this grave, and then the snicked of his blades as they expose from his hand and pull back in. Beast would stake his reputation on the fact that Logan was dead, but somebody did take the body of Logan. Somebody got it out of there and then buried it up again, and one of the things that they're looking for is that there are so many secrets involved with Logan, so many different pieces of him that could be used for research, that have been used for research in the past, there's a whole host of people that would be looking into capturing this former X-Man and Avenger. And that leads us to the question, where is Wolverine? And then we actually go over to a secondary story, which is about Tony Stark, and this is more about getting everybody together. We see an invasion that's happening at Stark Tower, and it actually turns out that it's Kitty Pryde bypassing all levels of security before she has this conversation with Tony Stark. She fills him in on the details that he was buried, of course, and that he has now escaped. He is no longer around. Nobody knows where Wolverine is, and he's either on his own or he's being captured by somebody else. And Tony's really glad that she came to him first, but she didn't. She came to Daredevil because Daredevil seems to know things. The man is a mystery, and he likes that good mystery. But he's not the only person. Tony Stark isn't the only person that would be looking for him, and even though the Reavers seem to be captured in this original story, there are possibly some other people that are out there, and one of the most famous people to be associated with the Reavers would be Lady Deathstrike, who happens to be dealing with some handiwork at that point in time, saying that she's going to be going after Logan. Tony, of course, having Wolverine as a former teammate on the Avengers, is going to put together the classic team that is going to go take a look for him, and of course, the X-Men themselves. And it seems like a group of the women, the females that have known Wolverine the longest. We've got Rogue, we've got Storm, we've got Kitty, you've got Jubilee, you've got Psylocke. They are all going to be heading off and they're going to be taking on this task of hunting down Wolverine. So that gives us at least four different stories that are going to be running parallel as they hunt down this man they once knew. You've got a Daredevil story, you've got a Lady Death Strike story, you've got these women of X as they're trying to hunt down Wolverine, and then finally Tony Stark and the former New Avengers that are going to be dealing with this. They're kind of excluding the young Jean Grey. They're not necessarily going to take her along with them because the relationship was really with that older Jean Grey. These women all know him much more intimately I'm not sure if it's that kind of intimate, but they all know him a lot more than this younger version does. But she's psychic. She can tell what kind of mood is going on. And what we actually find is that we mirror what happened in Marvel Legacy number one in the final pages of Hunt for Wolverine before we get the implication that something greater is going to be happening. So as far as Hunt for Wolverine, I think that it's an okay story. It's not necessarily something that blew my socks off when it came to the visual spectacle, the the art for David Marquez in the first story was pretty excellent. I really love the action scenes that came along with it, and I found that it was really engrossing in that aspect. I love the inclusion of Reed Richards and this kind of past motif that went into it, the fact that Kitty phased out Wolverine's body and then they gave him a proper burial instead of turning him into this kind of sideshow display piece. That shows the kind of respect that they had for him as a teammate, but what we see is that this final piece, this final story, is just a way to kind of make sense of why these four different teams would be coming after Wolverine and trying trying to hunt him down. The most interesting thing is how he has his youthful appearance and what he's doing outside of trying to collect the Time Stone, which was happening in Marvel Legacy number one. The Wolverine that they're hunting now, is that the same one that they have been tracking through the Where is Wolverine story in a variety of different books, or is it something different? Is it a clone? Is it some other means of making Wolverine a part of the Marvel continuity? And that's the interesting story that we're going to have to track down in these 
these next four part four, these four mini series that are now four parts. So like 17 total books and we don't even get the answer to where Wolverine is at the end, I don't think. So I'm interested to see what you guys think about this book. Let me know in the comments down below and we can start that conversation. As always, if you like what you see, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to get more news reviews and commentary on comic books, comic book movies, comic book TV shows and games, and anything and everything inside the world of comics.